Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's session on the book of Proverbs. Recording is on. I hope each of us had a good weekend. Even before we could begin with our class, let's uh, start with a word of prayer. Jeffina, you will lead us in prayer. Yes. Dear yeah. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We thank you for this beautiful day and for the beautiful class that we are about to have. I thank you for everyone who is attending the class. I thank you for the help. I thank you for the great mindset that you have given us this morning. Father, as we listen to this class, let your Holy Spirit fill us, let your understanding fill us. Every time when we listen to this, let us apply it in our life and let us live as an example to all the people who are around us. Let us shine the light that the God has given us. God, be with us and guide us. Fill us with knowledge and wisdom. I pray for everyone who is attending. I pray that this class will be a blessing to our life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Well, today we're going to study on the book of Proverbs. Before we could, I uh, just present the slide. Let's keep our notes and our Bibles ready. Yes. Yeah. You all can see this, right? Okay. So the book of Proverbs is a book, something that instructs us how to live a life wisely. Have you ever met somebody who, who was just full of wisdom? And Uno may be an, uh, an elderly person at home, a grandpa or grandma. Uh, we would just love being around them uh, just because they would tell us amazing stories, the truth about life, what they went through, their life experience with us and we would always love to be around them to listen to their stories so the book of proverbs is something to do about about wisdom where it imparts the wisdom uh, uh, from our history where we can apply it in our life so so far in the bible as we started a number of weeks ago we started to learn uh, from the book of genesis the very first book of the bible so we went on, uh, you know, we went through it from uh, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, and all of these books uh, tells us the real story, the story of God, how uh, how God created people and how the mankind fell, and then how God begins with a mission to reach back to them and bring them back. So that's the big story. But once we get to the book of Proverbs, it changes. There's a change. It does not deal uh, with God's covenant or temple or about Moses or law or about the land. But here it talks about the wisdom. It, it, it talks about how a human, a man should live, how he can change his life. So the uh, so the book of Proverbs, along with book of Proverbs, we also will be studying Ecclesiastes and Song of Songs or the Song of Solomon. And these are the book, uh, which is a, a um, wisdom literature where we can learn wisdom, which can be applied to our daily living. So uh, the book of Proverbs helps with that. So uh, the main idea of this book is godly wisdom which is highly valuable and very necessary for a living and a successful life. And it's available for everyone who seeks it. That's what we see in James chapter 1, verse 5. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who is the source of all wisdom. And he gives us liberally. You know, when we seek God, he gives us wisdom liberally. So that's what we will be learning through the book of Proverbs. So as long as we uh, define the word successful. So when we read this book, when we take the wisdom from this book, we can lead our life successfully. So when we define this word successfully, 
is available for everyone whoever seeks it so hopefully you and i uh, you know get the right kind of wisdom as we study the book of proverbs and the uh, the structure of this proverbs as um, you know if i say a little bit of the structure it has about 31 chapters in the book of proverbs and that uh, and that's the reason where a lot of people read um, you know read one chapter a day so do, uh, throughout the month they get to read each chapter a day so for example today is 11 read proverbs 11 and tomorrow being 12 we would read proverbs 12 so like that we would be covering all 31 chapters in a month the month which has 31 days of course uh, so as we meditate on this wise saying every day yes we tend to become wiser we tend to intentionally apply those uh, wisdom in our life, uh, in our day-to-day -day life, and we would be much more watchful in leading, uh, leading our life. Okay, now let's turn to the book of Proverbs, which says the 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 Proverbs itself named in a Latin word, which means for words so the book of proverbs along with the other books of job ecclesiastes and uh, song of solomon is called the wisdom literature from the hebrew old testament so the book of proverbs may be considered as a manual script uh, for practical rules for a daily living for all ages and for all conditions of men so the key word in the book of proverbs is wisdom the ability to live a life skillfully, which is very important. And throughout this book, when we see uh, in verse 7, Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7. Can one of us please turn to Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7 and read? Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and discipline. Can you also read Proverbs 9, 10? Chapter 9. Ma'am. Verse 10. Yes. They will be garland to grace your head and a chain to adorn your neck. My no, son. No. Um, is that Proverbs 9, verse 10? Chapter nine. The fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Thank you, thank you. So we always been uh, studying about the fear of the Lord. So the fear of the Lord is what brings us knowledge. When we read Proverbs one seven says, "The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge," and in Proverbs nine ten it says, "The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, knowledge." and the understanding so all we need is the fear of the lord and which is the essence of all to uh, uh, all uh, human for his wisdom so the proverb applies the principle of god's teaching to our whole life to our relationship to our work at home it gives us ability to uh, make decisions and it changes our attitude reaction and everything man does and says about it um uh, in our everyday life. So the book begins with a design, with an introduction. When we uh, turn to chapter one, chapter one to nine, it links uh, it links to the book of uh, the, the first kings of Solomon, where we read that uh, Solomon, uh, um, you know, asked God for wisdom to lead Israel well. And we see that later in the chapter that God granted his request. And then Solomon became known as the wisest man in the ancient world. And we are also told that in First King that, um, you know, he has written thousands of proverbs and poems and collected knowledge about the plants and animals. Look like Solomon was the uh, fountainhead or, or the source of wisdom those days in Israel's wisdom literature. So just like Psalms, 
Proverbs also has multiple individuals as the author. Uh, but then Solomon was uniquely qualified to serve as the principal author because it says that, you know, first 29 chapters were written by Solomon and it has also been recorded in Proverbs uh, chapter 1 and chapter 10 and chapter 25 that Solomon was the author. But then the last two chapters, chapter 30 and 31, uh, are been written by the non-Jewish people. So uh, chapter 30 was written by Agar and chapter 31 was written by uh, a non-Jewish king, Lemuel. Uh, Lemuel and he talks about his mom's wisdom. We will, we will study it much later as we go through the chapters. So the very purpose of writing the book of Proverbs is the knowledge. Knowledge is nothing more than an accumulation of the raw facts. But wisdom is the ability to apply that knowledge that we gain in the right place at the right time to see uh, to see how we can answer or react to people or how we uh, conduct ourselves in different events and situations of our life and uh, you know with the help of god of course um, so in the book of proverbs solomon reveals the mind of god in matter high or low or in common and when we also studied the book of Kings, we saw how Solomon, with his wisdom, uh, gave the right judgment to the people who walked into him. And he was admired for his great wisdom. We saw the kings and queen from different places sought uh, sought Solomon for his wisdom. They got the clarification. They seek his help. And we also saw, uh, because of his wisdom, uh, yes, God has blessed him with that wisdom. And because of that, God also gave peace around his, uh, around, uh, um, his kingdom. That uh, during the rule and reign of Solomon, there was not any war. There was peace. And he had a, a good relationship with the other kings as well because of the wisdom that he carried within him, which was a gift given by God. So... Uh, unlike him, even when we seek God, even we can gain that wisdom so that we can conduct our, uh, our daily life, uh, 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 our uh, personal conduct or any kind of relationship that we interact on our daily life uh, can be uh, conducted in a much well manner uh, with God's wisdom. So when we study chapter one, um, we see from chapter 1 to 9, uh, it gives us an introduction. Proverbs gives us an introduction and uh, about uh, the knowledge, the, uh, the wisdom of God. In Hebrew word for knowledge, it is called as uh, kokma, means much more than just a mental activity. It was, uh, uh, it was the first action also for a man to conduct himself with godly wisdom. So uh, skillfully, if we think uh, we need knowledge, but we need knowledge, along with that knowledge, we also need wisdom to apply that knowledge in the right place. So when we see in the book of Exodus, God did give this knowledge to the person. Uh, uh, initially, in the time of Moses, when they had to um, build the tabernacle and they had to uh, make the equipments like the... Uh, um, like the Ark of the Covenant or many other things for the tabernacle. So God gave this knowledge for the uh, for the craftsmen to make those, uh, to chisel uh, the Ark of the Covenant, to make the cherubim, uh, uh, seraphims and many other things which God instructed and God gave that knowledge and the wisdom. So uh, in the same way, when we fear God and when we see god god gives us the knowledge and he's all he also gives us the wisdom so that's what we learn from the book of proverbs that when we fear god when we fear god we increase in our learning we increase uh, in our learning and when we increase in our learning we he also gives us the knowledge uh, uh, the wisdom and the understanding that is needed for us to live in a daily life so now the fear is uh, not about that terror talks about but in a healthy sense of reverence or for god and about um you know uh, about his wisdom um 
and also uh, the the scripture says when we humble ourselves uh, the god uh, you know he gives us a wisdom and he exalts us in his timing so uh, in chapter 1 uh, to 9 it contains many short one liner proverb uh, uh, that we find there are some 10 speeches about father uh, writing to a son uh he, he, he writes like uh, you know in chapter 1 verse 8 we see that listen my son to your father's instruction and do not forsake your mother's teaching so unlike that you know there are many short saying like a uh, son should listen to the wisdom and cultivate the fear of the lord and how he can live accordingly which means a life of virtue integrity generosity all of which leads to a success and peace so we see that uh, so the father also warns his son uh, about the folly the evil and silly decisions that will breed selflessness and uh, you know selfishness and pride which would in turn ruin his life and bring shame to him so the son should make a pursuit of wisdom and have this fear of the lord uh, uh, with his greatest goal in life and this way of thinking forms the moral logic for, from the entire book so we can as we read this we can also get our life orchestrated in that way so these speeches about father giving to the son it's like god instructing us as well when we read it uh, you know uh, we we gain wisdom to conduct our life in a rightful manner uh, yeah so uh, as we read from chapter 1 to 9 we see there are four poems about the lady wisdom uh, here the wisdom is a feminine word so here we see the wisdom has been poetically personified as a woman who calls out to humanity to pay attention and to seek her so the wisdom says that she is woven into a fabric of the universe and so wherever you see people making a wise decision they are relying on the wisdom so we see someone being generous or uh, having integrity and upholding justice in their life so they are drawing the wisdom they are drawing wisdom so the lady wisdom poem here which is a creative poetic way of exploring the idea uh, that we live in god's moral universe and so fearing the lord is a right way to live in our life so that we can gain wisdom from god and now together these two sets of speeches from the father to the son and from the lady wisdom way we can draw the wisdom actual wisdom to lead our life claims a uh, powerfully claims this book as a wisdom literature so uh, that uh, yeah with that we will move on to this slide i guess take you to the second slide so here we see how the book has been structured um pro, uh, purpose of this proverbs are been given in chapter 1 and we also see the theme the introduction and the uh, commendation of the wisdom and then <clears throat> uh father's instruction we see from chapter 1 to chapter 9 we see father giving instruction to the son or the proverbs to the youth we can see that and along with it from there from chapter 1 to chapter 29 we see the principles of wisdom or the counsels of wisdom uh, which is mostly written by solomon it's the first collection of solomon from chapter 10 to 24 again the second collection of solomon we see from chapter 25 to 29 and uh, yeah we see the words of agar uh, in uh, chapter 30 and then a uh, words of lemuel uh, about a virtuous wife he has been inspired by his mom and he writes in chapter uh, 31 about that and that's the uh, also the conclusion of the book and this book is believed to be written in judah in the time period of 950 to 700 bc and there's also some of the comparison when we read through our notes we will see 
comparison between Proverbs and Psalms. Uh, well, the main author of this book is Solomon. And there we saw the main author, that is most of the books we contributed from King David. And in Proverbs, we see believers living truth. And here we see believers praying and worshipping in the book of Psalms. In Proverbs, we see the life <clears throat> before men. In Psalms, we see the heart towards God. Give me a minute, please. Sorry about it. Okay, so uh, love toward men, we see love toward men and love toward God, and we see the practical wisdom in Proverbs and Song of Devotion in Psalms, and in Proverbs, Proverbs we see the Hebrew wisdom, in Psalms we see the Hebrew worship. And so in the next section, that is from chapter 10 to 29, we see about the Solomon speeches where we find hundreds of ancient proverbs and they apply wisdom in fear of the Lord. Fear of the Lord to every life topic you could imagine. So we can, uh, we can apply this to our life, our work, uh, our neighborhood, friendship, sex, marriage, money, anger, or forgiveness. It can be various things. And these are all uh, filtered uh, through the value system of Proverbs 1 to 9. And these Proverbs, they are all pretty short, one line, easy to memorize. And actually, this section of the book is meant to become a reference work that we could come across time and time again through the years, which raises some important issues in learning how we can apply this for Proverbs in our life. And as we read this, Proverbs are by nature about probabilities. If we fear the Lord, we will make the right decisions. We can lead our life. We can make good choices in our life. And if we do not have fear, we will end up making wrong decisions. And uh, that may uh, take our life into some danger. So, um, with this, we will move on to the next. So the book of Proverbs are not also the promises, but they are not formulas also to have a successful living. But then um, some Proverbs, for example, the fear of the Lord prolongs our life, but years of the wicked are cut short. Or we can also see this verse saying that train up a child in the way they should go. And then when they are old, they will not turn from it. So these are the certain things which we can take it and we can apply it in our life. Um, due to the week uh, in a network signal, I would just put our video off so that there wouldn't be any connectivity problem. Okay, is that okay, class? Yes, ma'am. Sorry. So yes, so fearing God, being a moral person, will most likely lead to a better, longer life. And raising our kids in that stable, loving home does set uh, set them well. So we can um, we can trust God in these areas. So whatever Proverbs says in this area, like trusting God, uh, fearing God and teaching the children about uh, how they need to go at the early age. Uh, these are some of the applied and proven principles that we can take it from this. So a lot of things can often uh, go wrong in our world. And also, lastly, Proverbs by nature, uh, making us to focus on the general rule. Uh, which would be many as we read it. And there are some exceptions with other wisdom books like Job, Ecclesiastes, or the Song of Solomon. But together, they acknowledge that um, life is too complex for simple formulas, which is why we all need the wisdom books together to get a bigger picture of our life and how we can lead our life. So with this, it leads us 
uh, to the section of uh, chapter 30 and 31. So these two, these two uh, chapters, these two chapters are read, uh, two large section of this uh, of this book, and chapter thirty, as I said, it has been uh, written by Eger, who begins by acknowledging his own ignorance and uh, folly and his great need for God's wisdom. So Eger is the only prayer in Proverbs who asks God, uh, who asks God to make his content with a humble life make his life content and how to lead a humble life and uh, and and a life uh, and he also asks god lord i don't want to become uh, poor nor be too rich because both uh, will take my heart away from god so he is asking god god give me your wisdom okay so that i can lead my life with humility and not have pride in it and we also see Eger, uh, you know, agrees with Apostle Paul, who said, God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. And God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. So our world does not believe this. As our world values strength, power, and also com uh, uh, competency or the very least appearance of those kind of things but god has determined to destroy the wisdom of the world so he has chosen to use things like you know the simple simple man or sometimes you know the broken man untalented and all but god picks those men and he he gives them the skill he gives them the talent he nurtures them he gives them the wisdom and he lifts them up why to nullify the things that are around us so that we do not boast on ourselves with our skills with our talent but we give glory to god so we see here that you know um uh, uh we see that Hagar is asking god god i depend on you for your wisdom for your guidance and uh, and he's also uh, lifting it as a prayer lord help me to be content in my life that i may give you the glory so we see that ega discovers that the divine wisdom is everything and he needs it and it's been given in the scripture and he teaches to live well uh, and so ega uh, puts a model uh, uh, he sets himself as a model to the readers of proverbs somebody uh, who was always open to god asking god for his wisdom and also being a humble friend of God and saying, God, I'm contented with what you have blessed me with and I give you all the glory. So, so this is something that we can learn from Hagar. And with this, we will move on to the last chapter, chapter 31, which is written by a non-Israelite king, Lemuel. And he passes on the wisdom that was given to him by his mom. So it's a guidance for being a wise and a just reader. So this poem, uh, each line begins with a new letter of a Hebrew alphabet. And the entire poem is about a woman of a noble character. So it depicts a woman who lives according to the wisdom of Proverbs and stands like a model of someone who takes God's wisdom and then translates it into practical decisions and every day at life. So we see that at work or at home, uh, in a family and in a community, how she conducts herself, how she uh, applies the wisdom of God and nurtures every area. She tries to be excellent in every area and she stands as an example. So this is what King Lemuel has seen his mom and learned from his mom. So he writes as how a, how a strong woman can be. So the book <clears throat> opened with the words from a father to a son. And about listen and in between we see listening to Lady Wisdom. And now we see the book closes by offering the words of a mother to a son about a woman who lives wisely. So the book of Proverbs is, um, is for every person in every season of a life where we can draw wisdom and apply it to our life. So I think it's like um, 
guidebook for our everyday living so we can also live our life wisely and which also would be pleasing god in a daily life <clears throat> Uh, so, uh, and I also see that every chapter, every chapter in the book of Proverbs is so very important. We cannot miss on anything. Uh, so I will leave the class open where as you, I'm sure each of us would have read. Uh, I'm sure each of us would have read through this book of Proverbs from chapter 1 to 31. I would request each one to share your uh, uh, inspiration from the book of Proverbs. What is that has touched you? You can read that word and you can just share a little bit about what has touched you. So I keep this open to the class to share your views. So we all can learn together. Because this book is about a practical learning, how we have applied the book of Proverbs in our life and what has helped us. Okay, let's start with the Divya. Divya, you would like to share any verse from the book of Proverbs that inspired you? Sure, sure, Pastor. There are so many, actually. Um, especially, I love Proverbs 3, 5 to 7, mm -hmm. uh, which says about trust in the Lord uh, and uh, not to be wise in your own eyes. Um, fear the Lord uh, and yeah, just commit your plans to him and he will make all your paths straight. I love that verse very much. Uh, also, I love... Uh, and what it says in Proverbs 6, I think, uh, it's about the six things that God hates. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so uh, I was just, uh, um, you know, the list of things, it's a good list to look back and uh, yeah. reflect on ourselves, whether we are, you know, uh, sometimes falling into any of those categories. I'm just, um, yeah. So, yeah, you can list those uh, as we read so that it will benefit our whole class, Tavia. Yeah, sure. Proverbs Proverbs 6, six, yeah, Proverbs 6, 16 to 19 says, the, there are six things the Lord hates, seven that are detestable to him, haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked schemes, feet that are quick to rush into evil, a false witness who pours out lies and a person who stirs up conflict in the community. Yeah. 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 So this one and also this, uh, the, the very verse that we uh, first read, that's the fear of the Lord uh, is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge. Uh, so I used to think, what is the fear of the Lord? Um, and whenever I uh, read uh, uh, Job as well as Noah, it, talks about them that they were blameless uh, and walked before the Lord uprightly. So that's a characteristic of uh, a person who fears the Lord. Um, yeah, so I just love how, you know, we can look uh, into different characters in the Bible and see these, these wise sayings being emulated in their lives. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So in fact, even Proverbs 31, I really mm -hmm. love that. Charm is deceptive, beauty is fleeting. Yeah. Love all those verses. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Devina. Thank you. Uh, yes. Elisha, would you like to share? We'll have three or four people share. Elisha, Brother Lubega, John, Nikki, Rosalind, Jeffina, um. Rebecca. Anyone, please go ahead. One of the verses which, uh, which I like is Proverbs 16, verse 7. When a man's ways are pleasing to the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. Amen. Very, very important, isn't it? Thanks, John, for sharing that. That was uh, which verse? Uh, Proverbs 16, verse 7. Verse 7, yes. Yeah. When a man's ways pleases the Lord, he makes even 
his enemies to be at peace with him. And this is a very much practical saying that which happened to Solomon. He had peace during his reign. Praise God. Next. Proverbs, yes, brother Vashish, please go ahead. Proverbs 5, 6. Uh, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. Make your uh, paths most straight. Most of the time, actually, we are confused about the future. But these words mm -hmm. actually encourage that, okay, we should and we must trust in the Lord with all our heart. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Next, okay. we have Anita. Anyone in the class? Okay. I would also like yes, to pleasure. share on a. I would also like to share on a Proverbs uh, ten twelve, uh, which talks about love that covers all sins. And I believe that um, as believers, when we should love, it is the love of God for humanity that brought Jesus Christ to redeem us from the, the penalty and the guilt of sin. In the same way, we must demonstrate love to our fellow men so that you will not, you will not count their many offenses or sin against them. So Proverbs is a book that teaches us wisdom. And one of the greatest wisdom that the book teaches us is to love and love all men so that you will not count their sin against them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Elisha, for sharing that. <clears throat> Brother Lubega, Jeffina, Sid, Roslyn. Ma'am, I would like to read yes. from uh, the verse that um, always encouraging, encourages me is Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20, uh -huh. uh, 21, 22. Like it says, My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Amen. Okay. Uh, having read this, like there are times when I do fail. Mm -hmm. So, like, you know, whenever I have a tough time, I fail in, you know, in uh, in obeying the word of God. Like, I do come back to the scripture and remind myself again what mm -hmm. I have to do, you know. Because it says, put away from you a deceitful mouth and put perverse lips far from you. Let your eyes look straight ahead and your eyelids look right before you. Mm -hmm. so, you know, uh, really, Proverbs uh, encourages me. Uh, I don't say that I'm a perfect uh, a woman, but then, yes, whenever I feel, I do come back and remind myself all these scriptures. Thank you. Thank you. Does this uh, scripture also remind us of Joshua chapter 1 8? Something similar there it says, um, Joshua 1 8 says, This book of law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success. And here it says, My son, give attention to my words, incline your ear to my saying, do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in midst of your heart, for there are life to those who find them, and health to all their flesh. So when we read God's word, the scripture, the scripture actually keeps us, uh, you know, it gives us the fear of God. That means God is watching over us, and we need to lead our life, um, you know, uh, watchful of what is right, what pleases God. What, what delights him. So when we uh, being mindful of God and, you know, lead our life in, a, in, a, in the way that pleases God, it actually brings life to us and health and healing to our flesh. And also in book of Joshua 1.8, it says it will also give us success in our life. Yes. 
Thank you, Roslyn. Next. Anyone else would like to share? Okay. With this, we will move on. Yes, Brother Lubega, please go ahead. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, I look at uh, Proverbs 7, verse 1, which says, My son, keep my words and the treasure of my commandments within you. And when you go, when you look at that, it means when I was reading somewhere before I joined this course, you can see that uh, King Solomon wrote like three books, not maybe in in its totality, but uh, because there are almost three of them which are attributed to him. I look at the uh, Songs of Solomon that he might have sung or that might have wrote during he, when he was still a youth. And you see uh, the proverb when he's an aged man and, and, and a middle-aged man. And we look at anxieties of the preacher when he's very old. So you look at here, he was giving his son, telling his son that my son, keep my words and the treasure of my commands within you. Meaning that if you really do what I'm telling you, you will not pass through the berserk of the things that I passed through as a youth. That's what I take in this scripture. So I also tell my daughters that my daughters keep my words and the treasure of my commands within you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Very important. Thank you so much for sharing. We also see the book of Proverbs asking us or encouraging us. Uh, okay. Uh, encouraging us to embrace wisdom. When we embrace wisdom, we embrace God who is the source of all wisdom. And with that wisdom, we can lead our life pleasing to God with all awareness and you know we will also be a uh, leader life and we will find success in our life um, with that I would like to play a short video which uh, uh, narrates the story of the book of Proverbs One of you all, please confirm if the audio is clear. The book of Proverbs gives us a vision of the path. Thank you. Thank you. The life and death represented by the image of two women. One is named the Lady Wisdom. She leads all who will listen to her words down the path of life. The other is named Lady Fall. Her lives are calling people off wisdom's path to come and die. And this should remind us of the beginning of the Bible, how in the book of Genesis, God in his wisdom created a garden and put two trees within it. One was the tree of life, which had fruit that would keep you near God and eternally alive. The other was the tree of knowledge, which had fruit that was desirable to the eyes and even promised to make you wise, but in the end, its fruit would only cause you to die. The first to face this paradigm were who were told to let God's wisdom define what is wrong and what is right, to trust wisdom's voice, to listen to wisdom's words so that thereby they too would become wise. Through wisdom, they would live with God and eat from the tree of life. But there was another voice in the garden by the tree of knowledge that did not speak wisdom, but spoke lies. It was the voice of the serpent that called the gardener to the side and taught them to question the voice of wisdom, taught them to listen to their own truth, to define their own versions of wrong and right. And this was the voice of sin, the voice of the enemy. This was the voice of Lady Folly. Adam and Eve turned their backs on God, on wisdom, and therefore 
on life. They turned toward folly, toward sin, which opened up the door for them to die. So they were separated from God, who is the source of life. They were separated from the tree that would keep them alive. The point of Proverbs, then, is to get us back in to the garden, back to life, back to Eden. And Proverbs does this by trying to teach us to listen to the voice of Lady Wisdom. And the primary way Proverbs seeks to tune our ears to wisdom's voice and open our eyes is with short, simple sayings that play out God's wisdom in everyday life so that we can see in everyday things what God's ways look like. And what they look like is life. What they look like is vitality. What it looks like to be wise is to have joy, favor, and immortality. What it looks like to live with wisdom is to be back in the Garden of Eden. Which is why in Proverbs, Lady Wisdom is not just giving good advice. She is leading those who will listen to the Tree of Life. But alongside the Way of Life, found beside nearly every wise proverb line, we find the way to death also being described. She is called adulteress, forbidden, wayward, lady folly. Her speech is smoother than oil. Her lips drip with honey. She lures people away with her vain promises of pleasure, ease, and fame. But her path only and always leads to the grave. Just like what happened to Adam and Eve when they turned to the forbidden tree, any time we try to define what is good and right in our own eyes, any time we try to find the pleasure in places God wisely denies, any time we try to live contrary to what is wise, we take the forbidden fruit and swallow folly's lies. Any time we try to find a way to live apart from God, we only find our own demise. And that is because we are trying to live apart from the tree of life, which is why we all die. Because doing right is not our default position. We as humans don't naturally listen to the voice of Lady Wisdom. So when we meet her in Proverbs, she is not some quaint, quiet teacher. Instead, she's begging people to listen like some wild street preacher. Proverbs shows us a picture of Lady Wisdom crying loudly along our paths and in public squares, trying to snatch people before they fall into folly's snare. She says, if anyone would turn to listen, she would pour her thoughts into them and they would know wisdom, but no one pays attention to this wise rhetorician. And so instead of pouring out wisdom, the foolish will get disaster and distress. Instead of receiving the tree of life, all who follow folly choose the path of death. But God's wisdom would triumph over folly because wisdom would come in the flesh. Wisdom would move beyond the words and sayings of Proverbs to take on life and breath. Wisdom would be a human. The voice of God would be like us so that we could encounter wisdom in the person of Jesus. Jesus is wisdom in the flesh. He is Proverbs made alive. He walked on actual paths 
words and spoke in actual squares to show us the actual way to life. He walked the path of the wise, which no one else was able to tread. He refused the snares of falling by which everyone had been misled. He went to the tree of life and a way out from the house of the dead. For by trusting in the life Jesus lived and the tree on which he died, we can escape the fruit of death and be fed by the final tree of life. We all approach this path. We all face this choice to follow the ease of Lady Folly or intently listen for wisdom's voice. The difference now is that Jesus does what Proverbs said wisdom would do for those who listen to her counsel and for those who would hear it. Jesus comes to fools like us and pours his wisdom into us through his spirit. Wisdom has come near us. What used to be a distant voice has now come inside. For the spirit of wisdom by which Jesus lived, died, and was made alive is the same spirit guiding those who trust Jesus down the path to the tree of life. So, uh, in Proverbs 8, we see that <clears throat> wisdom is personified and seen in perfection. It is a divine, and this wisdom has been incarnated in Christ, in whom are all hidden treasures of wisdom and knowledge. We see that Paul writing in the book of Colossians chapter 2, 3, that, you know, the hidden treasure, the hidden uh, in whom are all are hidden all treasures of wisdom and knowledge is through Christ. And also we see Paul writing in the book of Corinthians, uh, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, uh, verse 22 to 24, and also in verse 30, we see that uh, by his doing, you are in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption so we see that christ becoming our wisdom and when we have jesus with us we have the source of all wisdom within us so jesus guides us guides us in the right way when we seek him we seek jesus and so we see wisdom is jesus on the cross and we see how god himself completely humiliated and the world will look at him as Maybe the foolishness for sending his only begotten son. But then, while the message of the cross is foolishness, that, that is to the one who are perishing. But to us, who are believers, it has been saved. It is the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom. And the weakness of God is stronger than the human strength. For anyone willing to accept Jesus must leave their pride so that we can humble ourselves unto God. Uh, we also see in the book of Proverbs, we see that, uh, you know, uh, while ants have a storehouse and they compare locusts, organize, they admire the locust organization and lizards sled are impressive. But they are nothing when compared to the resurrection power of Jesus in the life of those who are humble. And we see their lives being transformed. So may the Holy Spirit open our eyes to see God's wisdom, which is hidden in this world. That, you know, through this wisdom, the humility, and as we receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior, and we see the Jesus wisdom in us in us, working in and through us. When we seek him, we can draw this wisdom from Jesus who's living in us because the scripture says that Jesus is abiding in us. We are one with him and one in spirit. So when we are one with him, when we are one in the spirit, 
Jesus is the source of all wisdom and we, each of us, have access for this wisdom. So the book of Proverbs talks about the wisdom, the godly wisdom, and as we are the New Testament believer, when we have received Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we have this wisdom within us. So with that confidence, we can lead our life we can lead our life with uh, with a confirmation that we have Jesus abiding with us. We have the spirit of wisdom with us where we can increase in that every day as we depend on him. So this is all about the book of Proverbs. Uh, yeah, open to class if you would like to share, add on. Before we could end this class in prayer. Okay, I see a question from uh, Sid, who is King uh, Lemuel. Only in this chapter we get to read him. Yes, King Lemuel and Agar are a mysterious person. We don't get to read about their background before, but then uh, only in the book of Proverbs, uh, whatever they have written has been recorded, but not much about them, Sid. Yeah. Um, okay. Can I request one of us to please uh, dismiss us with a word of uh, word of prayer, please? Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Father, by the grace of God, by the power of the Holy Ghost, we come to your presence, Lord. Thank you for the session, Lord. As we today, we have learned from the book of Proverbs, Lord. Your son Samuel wrote with the wisdom, Lord. You gave him wisdom, Lord. We want, Lord, to be uh, some part of that wisdom to be given to us, Lord. Lord, whatever we have done, Lord, whatever the Lord idols in the Bible, Lord, whatever the icons in the Bible have done, Lord, whatever led, we should be learning from their, Lord, their achievements and their failures, Lord, the mistakes they have done in their life, Lord, we should be not be repeating the same mistakes, Lord, guide us, Lord, whatever we are learning, Lord, here, thank you for the opportunity you have given us, thank you for the teacher, thank you for the session, we, we thank you, we, we acknowledge, Lord, all the, all the things you have given to us, Lord, in Jesus' name we pray, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sid. I'm also sharing the link for this video. If anyone would like to go back and watch on this video, you can. Thank you so much. God bless. See you all tomorrow with the next book. God bless. Thank you. Thank you. Good bless. Ma'am? Yes? Ma'am, I just wanted to know in the, in the assignment if there uh, if a person is preparing a presentation, is there is a number of limit that only this much number of slides should be there or something like that? Uh, there's no uh, nothing like that. Said so you can just prepare and upload it on the Google Classroom. Okay, thank you, ma'am. I just wanted to know that. Thank you.